Hi friends, welcome to my first garden update since planting. My name is Kalisha. You can find me anywhere online as Nadira Tani if you so desire. This is my 2018 container garden and I'm super excited to show you or to you know show you the growth that we've had since planting them. Um, I've got some successes, some fails. Let's start out with the fails so that we can end on a high note. So um, if you remember when in my planting video, I had showed these plastic um, containers that I got from the Dollar Tree. I was using them as seed starters. I put the dirt in or the soil and my seeds and everything. And I wanted to do like a greenhouse effect. So I covered them with saran wrap and uh, so that the, well, I watered them first and then I covered them so that it could create like a greenhouse. You know what I'm talking about. But the fatal mistake that I made was not putting drainage holes. So basically I drowned almost all of my seeds. <laughs> like, like, not, like only two things sprouted. And these are them. I put them in the heaviest pot possible, Lord. So this one is a cucumber and this one is a squash. It actually looks like I might have two squash plants in there, but here they are. Look at the little babies. So they look really nice and strong and that's making me so happy. Um, my goal for this garden is to get a cucumber, to get a sensibly sized cucumber. That's what I want. Um, was that my only fail? Yeah, that was basically my only fail. I mean, it was a huge fail because I had broccoli, string beans, like two different kinds of string beans. I had lettuce, um, I had more cucumbers. I had a whole container that was just cucumbers. Um, I had more squash. Um, I think there was something else that I had planted in there, but nothing germinated. Only these, these two <laughs> sprouts survived. Um, I think I am going to try this again. I'm going to put, put some drainage holes in there. Um, I'm not going to put the saran wrap over. I'm just going to, you know, treat it like a regular pot. But I am going to pop the holes in the bottom and, and try again because I do have a lot of those seeds left. Um, the other things that I put in as seed were some wildflower seeds. And I got this huge box of wildflower seeds wild flower seeds from the Dollar Tree that I just kind of threw in the pots and let them go. Those are kind of sprouting. You can't really see them. They're in the back over there, but um, it's, it's nothing to really write home about. So let's get into these big babies. Um, I think I was going to kind of go in order of like who's grown the most, but pretty much everybody has had like a huge growth spurt. So we'll go from the front to the back. So right here, I have my rosemary. Um, out of all of them, I think the rosemary has grown the least, and I just discovered today why. Um, all of these pots, all of the red pots, um, when you buy them, I got them at Walmart, when you buy them, they don't come with drainage holes already like popped into them, like built in. You have to like manually break them out. And I had broken out the drainage holes in what I thought was all of the pots, but I didn't break them out of this one. And it's been raining a whole lot um, this week. So I would come over and look at my plants and rosemary was just sitting in a puddle. Like there was a lot of water just, you know, puddled there because it wasn't draining out and it wasn't getting to evaporate because it was so wet this, this week or over the last three or four days. So, um, I thought, oh, maybe it's getting too much rain, like too much water at the same time because it was out here in the yard. So I moved it onto the porch. And then today when I looked at it, it was still the same, like still a huge puddle. So then I looked underneath it and I saw that there was no drainage holes. So I used the little rake thing and like broke the bottom of the container to make the drainage. And as soon as I broke through there, it was like a little waterfall came out of my poor little rosemary. So hopefully this baby will perk up and, um, you know, and start growing for me. Um, I am putting 
um, tomato and vegetable plant food in all of them. And um, whenever we have like eggs or anything, I save the shells, I dry them out, and then I crush them up and put those in the top. Um, I have read that that helps to deter things like slugs and snails. Um, and it's also good to have like the, the calcium from the eggshells in your plants. So yeah, so that's that. Um, just in that little bit of time that I was stroking the rosemary plant, like everything smells like rosemary right now and I love it so much. Oh, I love that scent. So next you can see, okay, rosemary, we're gonna put you back over to the side. The next baby is my icebox watermelon. Now, I'm gonna have to transplant, I have an icebox watermelon and I have a yellow watermelon over there. These are gonna have to get transplanted. I'm not sure if I'm going to put them in the ground or I have a kitty swimming pool that I, that I bought for like a big container. Um, I think I'm gonna put them in there and put this kitty swimming pool on like the back patio because the watermelon needs full light, like full sun, six plus hours. And um, I think that will be good. So they're gonna get transplanted because obviously they are <laughs> too crunk for their pots. So um, on here, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. I'm gonna take some pictures and insert, but there are one, two, two, I thought I saw third one, three, four. Yes, there are four blossoms that are opening and then there's a bunch more blossoms that are just buds right now. And I am so excited about this. Like, I've never grown a, a watermelon before. So I'm just kind of like watering it and letting it do its thing. But I love the way the leaves look on here. They kind of remind me of those like months what are they, Montserra? Monstera? Those really trendy leaves that you see on everything right now, like on Pinterest. They kind of remind me of those. Like, can you see this? Again, I'll put in a picture. Oh, you might be able to. But I'll put in a picture so that you can see. Um, I'll do close-up pictures and everything um, at the end as well. Um, but yeah. This is my icebox watermelon. Um, the icebox watermelons are supposed to be really small, so um, I'm super excited about that. So I think it's gonna be really cool to have little watermelons. Like if we get at least one watermelon, that'd be so exciting. But it'll be cool to have one little like personal, personal pan watermelon. <laughs> I think that would be awesome. So we've got the icebox watermelon who is having fun with life. Let me pick up your tendrils. Don't roll over them. Okay, who's next? Basil. This is my sweet basil. It's growing up pretty nicely. Um, nice big leaves. There isn't a whole lot to say about the basil plant. Um, we haven't started, we haven't used any of these in cooking yet. Um, what I want to do, there's a special way that you can trim basil to make it like create um, like a more bushy shape. So um, I need to read up on that again to find out exactly how that is that I should be trimming it to create that bush shape because I would love a basil bush um, instead of like the stalks right up in the middle. Um, but basically basil will, beha will behave like a hydra. Like if you know the mythical um, monster the hydra when you cut off one of its heads um, I think it was like three of them sprouted from that that one severed neck um, basil will do the same thing <laughs> so when it gets to a certain point um, you would trim trim the plant there and then like two or three new stalks will grow from that trimming spot and then you just let those get to that point and trim them and they'll branch out like that so I'm really excited to try that with this plant um, but it's it's growing a whole lot. Nice, big, and healthy, and happy. Um, who can you see next? Oh, let's talk about this mint, my mint plant. Look at that. This baby is just 
taking off. So this is actually two types of mint. There's chocolate mint and peppermint. Now, in my heart of hearts, I was hoping that the chocolate mint would be like, if I made tea from it, it would be like mint chocolate ice cream tea. It's not. It only vaguely tastes a little bit cocoa-y, but not really. It's more just mint. Um, that made me sad on the inside. <laughs> but I, I had my first few cups of, um, of peppermint and chocolate mint tea from this plant and it was great. I loved it. It tasted delicious. Um, let's see who's who. Um, okay, so they're planted this way. So the the short side, well, there we go. <laughs> the short side over here is the peppermint, and then the tall side on this side is the chocolate mint. Um, every so often I come out and I sit and I look at them to try to figure out like, how to really tell the difference between them. When they were smaller, the peppermint leaves um, were more rounded around the edges and the chocolate mint leaves were more like sawtooth. But now as they're getting bigger, all of the leaves are kind of sawtoothy. So I might have to put some sort of like line of demarcation <laughs> between these um, or it's just gonna be a free for all. Um, so yeah, I love it though. This is so cool. And you can like, if you brush your hands around in the peppermint plant, just like that, you, you can smell just the mintiness and it's so strong. Ah, I love it. I haven't tried chewing like the peppermint leaves fresh from the plant because I, I feel like that would be too much. Is that a chocolate mint one? I think this is a chocolate mint one. Ooh. No, this is peppermint. It's not too much. And that's so weird. It tastes like you're chewing like mint gum, but there's a leaf in your mouth. It's pretty cool. My, my breath is minty fresh now. Let's see, who is next? All right, let's talk about, oh, let's not sit on my legs anymore. They're going to sleep. Oh, let me unfold them. All right. Next up is um, yellow watermelon. This is just a regular watermelon plant that makes yellow fruit instead of red. This one is huge. And I think that I made a poor choice um, with putting the trellis in here because in my mind, I immediately went to cucumbers um, because cucumbers are climbers as well. Um, and I thought, oh my goodness, I need to put something here for all these tendrils to grab onto. So I put the trellis in and the watermelon plant is starting to grab onto it and climb up the trellis. Only watermelon are big. <laughs> so I'm going to have to unwrap all of these little tendrils from this trellis when I replant this baby. Um, because my cucumber is gonna need that trellis more than the watermelon. Now this one doesn't have any flowers on it yet. Let me see, are there any buds? No? Yeah, there's no buds on here yet either. I think, um, I think the tips here might be where the buds will form. So I definitely need to get these taken down because if, if, if a watermelon is planning to start growing from the top of one of these things, that's gonna be a sad day in watermelon land. Yeah, this whole thing's gonna topple. But look how big and beautiful these leaves are. Look at that. And they 
it just I just really love the shape of watermelon plant leaves like I've never seen them before because I've never grown watermelon but um they look really awesome I love it. so I'm gonna get up and push this one back tomato plant what kind of these are red beefsteak tomatoes and there are two baby tomatoes right here and there are a lot of blossoms on this one right now there are two four five 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 open blossoms and one that hasn't opened yet so I'm gonna have to get something to help this baby stand up a little bit better. Just put that in there for the time being. Nah. I will keep you out here so that I remember to get you fixed up. But this is pretty cool. They're doing really well. Um, oh, you can see them a lot better now. So those are the, the water watermelon those are the tomato babies and last but not least is my lemon cucumber plant now I will say I bought this one out of sheer curiosity because I was like I don't know what a lemon cucumber is but I like lemons and I like cucumber therefore I must like lemon cucumber right that's logic right so I bought this um, it is doing really well. Um, not a lot of like leaf death or anything like that. And um, I was looking through it today, um, checking for pests or anything like that. And there are some blossoms in there. So there's one. Is it only one? There's only one blossom, um, but I'm excited about it. I think that I will need to go in here and do some cleanup because there have been some leaves that shed. And because of the way that the plant grows, it's, it grows all of its leaves up like this and they're all flat. So there's a lot of like dark, like damp area underneath them. And it's actually, there's actually a couple mushrooms in there that I'm gonna pull out. So I need to do some cleanup in there because I don't want anything to like start decaying in there and ruin my chances of getting a cucumber because we're getting a cucumber this year. But that is everybody in my little garden family. Um, so yeah, I will do another update in a couple weeks. Um, hopefully there will be more like sprouts or flowers or fruits and yeah thanks for watching if you have any questions um, leave them down below if you have any suggestions or tips for for container gardening please leave those down below because I am always down to learn new tips and tricks on keeping plants healthy and alive and um, bearing so I think we did really good with the timing of this video because if you can hear, it's starting to rain. And um, so I'm gonna push all the babies back out so they get that good rainwater. And that's everything. So I hope you have a wonderful week. If you have a garden, I hope it is bearing for you and I hope it is giving you like that, that moment of joy with connecting with Mother Earth. So bye. Mm -hmm.